Welcome, everybody, to the Genesis Mindset. And in this episode, boy, the Atropa ecosystem is flying. So I made a video the other day about whether it was bearish or bullish, and I was erring on the bearish side. So there's a valuable lesson for everybody who watches this and for myself as well. This is a very valuable lesson. I'm going to be showing how Atropa is pretty much almost broken its all-time high. PDI broke its all-time high. Teddy Bear broke its all-time high. And really, a lot of the core tokens are flying. Then some cheeky little PDI opportunities, as well as the ETF narrative that's starting to play out in the Pulse Chain ecosystem. This is going to be something that I'll be covering more and more in the future. So with that, let's actually get into it. So first of all, Atropa, boy, okay. Let's zoom in here. So this is on the US dollar value. We are getting so very, very close to breaking this all-time high. So very, very close to breaking this all-time high. So here is the all-time high, just, just above three cents for a tropa. It's just below three cents. It's at 2.7 cents at the minute. So really, I made this video, I think it was about... <laughs> I made this video here seeing, okay, where do people actually think we are in the market? Do we think my, okay, so my original thesis on this was, we're probably going to have a run up in the same way that this has happened. Now, what I'm very excited by is I hadn't actually seen like this parabolic run yet in this second stage, the second phase of the Atropa ecosystem pump. Are we about to see that parabolic run? I mean, if we can do, if we can look at these, I know a lot of people like fractals, for example, and you extrapolate the general movements from here to here. If you look at the general movements, if I can just draw very quickly these general movements. So we had this up momentum here, very gradual, gradual up momentum, followed by this kind of like consolidation downward. And again, if we, I mean, you zoom into the volume here, very low and then boom, parabolic. Now we've had that here. We've had this kind of sideways and thank you, to the gentleman who pointed out dying volume is actually a sign of seller sellers running out, which, yeah, fantastic point. I mean, you can look at that here as well. The volume started to really, if I zoom in, the volume started to really die down here as well. The volume started to die down, die down. It was really at the bottom because there's no more sellers. This is what you don't want to see. See how there's a lot of volume here coming down and then the volume starts to dwindle away, dwindle away. So the seller exhaustion is occurring. So this is where we had the bottom. Now we're seeing some bigger candles here with some increase in volume. Does that mean we're about to see in the same way that we saw a parabolic run here with the Atropa ecosystem? Are we about to see the same thing happen over the next month or two? Very exciting ecosystem to keep your eye on. When you look at this against Pulse Chain, one of the other things, again, which is fantastic, is on my video where I was discussing this and I was erring towards the bearish side. Now, the lesson that I want to share here as well is you shouldn't always listen to what everybody on YouTube is saying. I'm just a dude sharing with you my perspective. I've never portrayed myself as an expert and I never want to portray myself as an expert. I want to remain humble and open and always in that learning beginner's mindset. This is something that I really try to train my mind to do. So... Here we had a breakout of the local high in pulse chain value. So this is very good. This is very bullish. So once it's in this zone, if we see a breakout of this zone, if we see it, if we see it reach up to these levels here, consolidate and break out, things are going to look very, very good for the Atropa ecosystem. It looks like this scenario, which is the one that I was betting for, is not in play. It's really looking like we're now in the more bullish scenario. So, hey, I was bottom signal. And there was even people in the video who said that I was a bottom signal. So good on you guys. Like, fantastic. This is actually how you should be viewing the world. You should view the world from the perspective that the world is God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, that's showing you the way. So whatever your mind is attuned to, this is how the world can actually respond to you. If you're really stuck in your mind, you're not going to be able to see the signs. You're not going to be able to see the direction, the flow that the universe is trying to give you. Now, the thing is, this is part of the thing that I'm doing as well. I didn't come out and say, hey, this is definitely bearish. That's not what I'm doing. I'm putting it out there to the universe. Is this bullish? Is this bearish? I don't have all the information that I need. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm feeling. What am I actually missing? So the universe came back. God came back, gave me an answer through the people commenting in the chat. 
And there's my answer. So now I've got a better understanding of how the market works. I've got a better understanding of how to play this in the future. It's not that I necessarily want to trade the tokens as such, but I do want to be able to know when's the right time to buy. Is it going to drop further? If it drops further, then I'm going to be slowing down on the amount that I'm going to be buying. So these are the kinds of things that I'm continuously trying to train my mind to. So really use me, use everybody, use Twitter, use everything as a way to help you advance your position so we can all win together. So, okay, back to the episode. So here we go. This is the Atropic system. Now we're going to go into PDI. PDI, oof. I mean, can you believe it? It's it, after the 99 Capital tweet, it just, it yeah, it just went bonkers, man. It really went bonkers. So 99 Capital tweet was here on the 6th. It took off. It's basically gone up. Oh man, it's done a 2x since that point in time. So all the all the people hypothesizing that it's that it's Richard or the OA or allegedly the OA that's behind a lot of this uh PDI ecosystem. So people are really starting to get bullish on that narrative. So at the minute, we are 0.3 cents. So we're not at the elusive one cent. Once we get to that elusive one cent, and could this be the parabolic run that's going to get us? to that elusive one cent. It's yet to be seen. Too Spooky pointed out the liquidity is very thick. So this really does slow it down. This is this is also something that I was very intrigued by because when we were actually uh, aiming for BFF to get to the 8K mark, for example, Maria wanted to keep the liquidity very thin so it could get there very fast. And then once it's there, then we can actually leave it there by providing liquidity. So because the liquidity is so thick, it does mean that it has to buy through a lot more. But if we see some Chad moves by the OA actually starting to like Chad into this, I mean, if the OA Chad's into this, this can this can fly very easily. But you know what? I'm not actually sure the OA wants to do this. I'm not sure the OA would want to like mm, send that kind of like clear signaling out because then there's just going to be a rush to purchase this. And I think it's really going to screw up the steadiness with which it's growing at the moment. I like the idea that it's growing nice and steady. We don't want it to have too many parabolic runs because you're going to get all the greedy people who are just going to be in it for the Xs. Again, I'm here because I want to build this system that's going to be the future of decentralized finance. This chain really is the future of decentralized finance, man. Like we have, we have desktop applications. We're completely disconnected. We have our own little city that's interconnected with all the different other cities. We have so many platforms and so many different layers of decentralized finance on here. And there's things that are happening in the background that other blockchains have absolutely no consciousness of, no awareness of whatsoever, which I'll be sharing in just a moment. So from this bottom to the one cent mark, it's just above a 5x. So it's almost a five and a half x from this local bottom. This is very achievable, man. This is extremely achievable. And it's something where, I mean, look at that. If you put it on logarithmic, it's not a very big run to that one cent mark. It's not a very big run at all. So once we get to that one cent mark, it's 100x to the dollar. So this is all very achievable. We've, we've really just started the bull market. So when it was down here, getting to that, that was like a 33x to the bottom. Who bought who bought those bottoms? 35x to the, to the, to the one cent mark. Who was buying those bottoms? Your boy was buying some of those bottoms. So again, if you believe in this narrative, this PDI narrative, the future is very bright. If you believe in the P-stable narrative. So now we're looking at some of the other opportunities. Teddy bear. So teddy bear has broken again its all-time high. The teddy bear, man, the teddy bear telegram. So teddy bear has broken its all-time high yet again. So this was its local high. It's only just tiny little wick above it. So it has broken it on the US dollar value. On the pulse chain value, it's still, I mean, it's still a good buy. It still hasn't broken its all-time high. So it still hasn't gone past its local. So this was the this was the Ran Nuna crypto banter and Moon King pump. And it still hasn't broken that. And from there, man, so this was 15th of December. So what are we now? Getting close to 15th of March. So January, February, March, three months. So in three months. I remember looking at the data. I remember looking at the Telegram and like, oh, we're almost above 3,000 uh, people in the Telegram chat. I was looking at it here. It's up to over 4,700 now. So it's over a 50% push. So that's that's getting close to like 55, 60% now 
of new people in the Telegram chat. It's continuing to grow. This is exactly what we want to see, but we also want to see this break, these local highs in the pulse chain value. That would be extremely bullish, but it also means it's still a good buy. So, okay, TSFI also having a pump. So these pumps are across the board. BFF, man, congrats to you if you were able to buy these BFF buys. I'm, I was looking at this and I'm like, gosh, darn, I wish I had some, I wish I had some more dosh. This is another beautiful little pump. You've just had a 60 to 60%, 50 to 60% pump off the bottom. That is awesome. So if you were able to capitalize on that, that's brilliant. And it's a 3x to the 8k target. So it's still in a good buy area, in my opinion. This whole area is probably a really good buy, in, just in my opinion, not financial advice, all that jizz jazz. So anything within this region where it's consolidated, this is all a good buy area, this whole zone here. If you really want to play it cute and play it clever, you can wait for it to come all the way down to this these prices here, just below the 2000 US dollar mark. But, you know, if you're in the DCA game, anything within here is a good opportunity, in my opinion, not financial advice. So TRSI also had a nice pump as well. I mean, things have just pumped across the board. Teddy bear. So this is the teddy bear nine. I keep an eye on this because my goal is to eventually accumulate one teddy bear nine just for the culture. Mantisa had a nice big fat, fat pump, 50% pump off the bottom. So Mantisa, uh, legal, legals had a pump. So things across the board have had pumps. Now, let's go into some of these PDI narrative opportunities. So the reason why I think these are very interested. So Sunny, it's simple math detective basically created these tokens. So this one here, die R contract address ending in 43C4. So what I what I previously had, I previously had uh, some stable coins locked up in the stability pool for liquid loans. And I was just monitoring the yield and I really liked it actually. It's a very, very clean UI. But the yield that it was generating in loan tokens, I was like, mm, okay, yeah, loan could pump and it could be a good reward, but I'd rather deploy this into something else that makes more sense. So even if I took those stable coins and I deployed it, because it was a very small amount of stable coins, I just wanted to experiment. So I'd rather deploy those stable coins into something that can get a 10X, for example. So even in Pulse Chain, can get a 10X. If I was to play that game of being in the stability pool, I would want you know upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars in the stability pool to actually tokens that I don't want to deploy, that might be like a percentage of my portfolio, but I just want to keep it somewhere safe to just generate yield. That's what I would be doing with that kind of protocol. So what I did instead was, if it's in the sense of utilizing that stable coin, playing on this PDI narrative, this DI R. So I've actually, I was actually, I purchased this a while ago. So uh, I purchased it, the first lot down here and the second lot up here. So now I've just repurchased it again with some of my profits in my Kamado uh, ecosystem. So I'm now basically break even on that. I took all my original out and that's just printing me money now, printing me new tokens. So from that, I've now redeployed that into some of these tokens. And this was from the USDL that I've deployed into here. So just a small portion of it. Now, the thing is, so what I've spent, I've spent, I converted that USDL to Pulse Chain. So I spent, uh, whatever it was. So let's just say 500,000 pulse chain at the minute. The value for buying the P die is possibly a better rate because the amount of P die that I'm going to get versus actually this printer, if I just, if this, if this stays at this value, if this stays, if this token, if the die R stays at this value, then it's probably not going to be worth it. But if I'm printing P die six or seven to upwards of 10, 15 P die a day, that's eventually going to become a dollar. That's a massive printer. But the other alternative is I can actually just buy the P die. But this is where I think the value of this is going to come into it. So if this token stays this cheap, there's going to be a point somewhere along the way where buying this which is printing you PDI at the rate that it's currently printing is going to be worth a lot more than actually buying the PDI. So for example, if PDI was at 50 cents, so for a million, let's just say a million pulse and it's 50 cents, 
whatever that math is going to be. So at the minute, let's just see what it is per pulse to, uh, to die. So at the minute, it's 23 pulse chain to one P die. There might come a time where it's going to be like 10,000 pulse to one P die when it's getting up towards here, when it's starting to get towards that $1 mark. And if this is staying at this rate or very low rate, there's going to be a point in time where purchasing this is going to be much better value than actually purchasing the beat the p die there's going to be there's going to be this point where there's like an arbitrage between the two and so this is why i'm betting on this it's printing me the p die and the value of the token is hopefully going to go up over time and it's going to match the value of the liquidity pools where eventually this is going to be much more worth it than just buying the p die and then of course the gap is going to close so this is what i'm playing on here the other interesting one that i've been that i looked at also, just today, that came into my awareness probably a week or two ago. Another sunny, it's simple math detective creation. So this is die LP. So basically, what you're getting in this is the LP of the P die to E die. So then you just buy this token, and then you're getting that LP. So then once you go to your once you go to your Pulse X, it won't necessarily appear on here, but this is essentially the token now that it started. It started auto adding to my Pulse X liquidity. You might actually have to do this. So this is what I had to do: find other to LP tokens, and then I had to enter. So I had to enter the die, and then the P die. Uh, the, the sorry, the E die, die from Ethereum, and then it says manage this pool. So then it added. Then it added it here because it wasn't actually here in the first place. And so now it's added it here. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Now, some other interesting opportunities. So St. Wolf has been a longtime supporter of this channel. So I really appreciate all the comments he does, all the feedback he gives. So I've been loving St. Wolf. So he's actually started to create some content as well. And he's been covering a lot of PLSP. So I'm going to be so this is Steady Pup. So Steady Pup, I did an interview with. If you haven't seen that interview, definitely go check out that interview. It was one of the best interviews I've done in terms of understanding everything that's happening with these types of tokens. Now let's have a look what Steady Pup's been talking about. Uh, sorry, St. Will's been talking about with PLSP UP. This is where I made my last video, all right? And look where we are now. So this has been almost 140%, okay? It was at about a half a million market cap. Now it's at about 1 million market cap. Now, this is all happening on the pump of a lot of the projects in Pulse Chain. Because as you know, and as I explained in my first video, Pulse Pup is like an ETF. Okay, where you are being exposed to hundreds of projects on Pulse Chain and the trading volume and the arbitrage between there that these bots are doing. All right. And you're taking. Okay. That point I really wanted to emphasize for me, that is the big selling point between PLS Pup, A1A, B2B. They're ETFs. So you don't need to be some trading guru. So I'm not a trading guru. So I like the idea of leveraging off somebody else's intelligence. I'm in Sonny's pub and I watch Sonny put up his charts and it's like, he just cleans up. He's cleaning up all the time. He does all these little buys and all these little sales and he's just cleaning up left, right and center. So basically you're betting on the intelligence and the skill of somebody like that who creates a token. So A1A for Sonny and B2B for Sonny. You're leveraging off his skills. So I just need to buy his token and his token is connected with all these different liquidity pools. And that's what's actually push, pushing the price of that. So it's actually like an ETF. What a concept. What a concept. E the concept of ETFs in the traditional financial system are huge. They've really like, they've exploded onto the scene when they came because you don't need to be some market whiz guru that's going to pick every stock it's too hard man and if your time is as limited as mine and you don't really want to sit there watching the charts every single day and figuring out where's the right time to buy and especially in australia you miss all those times so generally the market is hot during the american the american hours and the american hours kick off when i'm going to bed 
and they slow down when I wake up. So it's really like you kind of miss all the big opportunities. So with these types of ecosystems, you can, you're can you betting on Sonny, it's simple math detective, and his intelligence and his skill as a trader because he's the one that is creating this A1A and he's the one that's actually devising all these liquidity pools that is helping it go in and up to the right direction. And this is exactly what you see with ETFs. So the other one is obviously PLS. PLS pup, man, what a beast. So I did an interview with with Steady Pup. So the thing that I love about this, it's designed by a pup that has a steady nature. So this is the type of guy that I want to that I want to bet on. The intelligence with which he explained these concepts, the simplicity with which he explained these concepts, these are the types of people that I want to be following. Like you just know that Mr. Steady Pup is a smart dude. He knows what's up. So he's basically like, he's learned off Sonny and he's created this. And it's not a competition. They're both doing their own thing. They both have different liquidity pools. They're both experimenting with different things. But look at this chart, man. Like what a gorgeous looking chart. It is absolutely gorgeous. And once I did this, uh, once I did this interview with him, I've been waiting, waiting for a pullback, waiting for a pullback. And I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting like Mr. Pablo Escobar. And it's done 150% essentially. And I haven't been able to get a pullback. There was a little itty bitty little pullback here. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to wait for it to do just that little bit more. Something along these lines, like at least a 20% drop before I put something in. It didn't even do that, man. So all the liquidity pools that this is connected to is really driving the price of this up. So St. Wolf is saying from his video here where he's first started making content on this, 1,000x. And now it's done a 2x. So really a 500x from here. So he's arguing that this is an easy 500x. And honestly, honestly speaking, these are the kinds of numbers that I look at and I go, this is not outrageous because this is leveraging off all the different kinds of tokens in the ecosystem. If something with a smaller liquidity pool does a 100x and it's connected to those liquidity pools, it's taking advantage of those moves. So at the moment, there is not a lot of buyers. This is all just arbitrage bots doing all the work. So there isn't even that many buyers. So all of this here, USD, maybe maybe this these ones here, when they're double figures, maybe these are small buyers, but everything else that's under the double figures, the majority is, oh, here we go. So the, there certainly are people that are cottoning onto this idea, but all these tiny little single figure USD buyers and sells, they're all bots. So here, not so. So the opportunities, man, again, this is an ETF. This is another unique idea on Pulse Chain. That's the idea that I love about it. It's an ETF. It's a fantastic innovation. It's a fantastic idea. I haven't seen anything like this on any other blockchain. I might be oblivious to it. I might not have seen it, but I haven't actually, um, as far as I know, that there's nothing like this on any, any other blockchain. It's really just individual linear thinking token that just pumps and dumps. Pulse Chain has this unique consciousness with people that are just on another level. They're on another level. Why? Because the big dog, Dickie Hart, is on another level. So he attracts other people who are on another level, looking at all the other cryptocurrencies going, something's missing here. Like I'm not, I mean, even Steady Pup, very smart guy, very intelligent guy. And he basically got bored of playing that game with crypto. And then he saw Pulse Chain. He's like, hang on a minute. There's something going on here. I want to go investigate this. And it really it really brought his enthusiasm back into what it actually means to be part of decentralized finance and providing liquidity. And this is all thanks to the big dog, Richard Hart. This is all thanks to attracting those types of characters. So we are blessed to have these types of dude in our, dudes in our ecosystem. We're very blessed. I feel very blessed to have these guys. And it's like, I don't need to be the best trader. I don't need to understand every single little thing about liquidity pools. I'm just going to buy their tokens and just let it generate yields and do its thing and go steady up, steady pup on the steady up. So, okay, let's finish off with a book reading. So today, How to Win Friends and Influence People, one of my favorite books of all time. This is probably, if not my favorite book. So this particular part I wanted to share because I think this is a valid point in terms of how to actually convey these kinds of messages about these kinds of tokens to other people because people are really cemented in their way of thinking and this is just how the human mind is, particularly with men. So if you're going to prove anything, 
don't let anybody know it. Do it subtly, so adroitly that no one will feel that you're doing it. This was expressed succinctly by Alexander Pope when he said, men must be taught as if they taught them not, and things unknown proposed as things forgot. And then over 300 years ago, Galileo, I mean, Galileo was the goat. He was basically telling everybody like, hang on a minute, like you guys have got, oh man, the flat earthers who watch this, you're going to get pissed. But he was basically saying the earth's not flat, like it, it revolves around the sun. Like we have this misunderstanding of the way that the universe works. And he said, you cannot teach a man anything. You can only help him to find it within himself. And then as Lord Chesterfield said to his son, be wiser than other people if you can but do not tell them so. And then Socrates said repeatedly to his followers in Athens, one thing only I know, and that is that I know nothing. So I absolutely love that. And I absolutely wanted to finish on that quote with what we're actually talking about here, because it doesn't matter how much you tell people about PDI and what's actually happening. It doesn't matter how much evidence you show them. If you try to push that onto them, people's walls People's human mind is like a force field, is like a barrier. We live inside of our own mind worlds. We live inside of our own bubbles. I choose what comes into my bubble. Once I've programmed what's in this bubble, that's how my brain thinks. So if I've read a book like Think and Grow Rich, ah, I adopt these concepts of Think and Grow Rich. And depending on what's in the programming of, of my mind will depend on how much I can actually adopt what's actually in this book. So in the same way, if somebody has a very fixed mind about, I'm only going to buy these tokens or that's a scam and you guys are like this and I don't want to hear it, you're not going to help. You're not going to change those people's minds by pushing your opinion onto them. It simply doesn't work. The human mind is like a force field barrier. We actually have to melt their hearts. We actually have to show them the evidence, not in a forceful way, but just just like this, just keep showing them and the results will do the talking. And then people's minds will start to change. People's minds will start to adapt to the situation and go, hang on a minute, maybe I was wrong, but you cannot point out that, that person was wrong. Because if you point at, if you point out that that person was wrong, their force field gets stronger. They don't want to know about it. Human doesn't want to admit that it's wrong. This is why I always try to have a mind that says, I don't know anything because it really, it keeps my it keeps my force field like virtually non-existent. This is what I'm all about. I don't want that force field. I want to be completely open to the flow of the universe so that I can see everything and accept everything because that is the mind of the universe. That is the mind of God. So with that, thank you very much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Take care and we'll see you soon.